Who is Beth Byer? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> There's many different layers to that. <laughs> um, well, I'm a teacher, as you can see here. I teach um, music together classes for little kids, like zero to age five. Um, I've been doing that for about seven years. I started doing that when I took a break from acting, okay. actually. When I had my first son, I can't really do too much when you're pregnant. <laughs> and then we moved here, and um, there wasn't, there's only, you know, really the candlelight. Well, now there's Midtown Arts, too, around here, so there wasn't a lot of opportunities, and I was okay. equity okay. at the time. Okay. So um, I kind of took a break for about five years. Okay. I didn't do any shows, which was crazy. Um, so I started doing this, I started teaching, and then um, I had my second son, so now they're eight and six right now. But, um, and I saw they were doing Guys and Dolls out at the Candlelight, and that's one of my favorite parts I've ever done. So it had been like a long time, and I thought I was probably ready mm -hmm. to go back, yeah. so I went back and auditioned, and um, told them I was equity. They didn't have any guest artist contracts at that time. And I said if I was cast in the part that I would be giving up my card, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so since then, I think I've done six shows at the Candlelight. Okay. I think so, maybe seven, I'll have to count. In the last three or four years. Very awesome. Yeah, so it's been awesome because, you know, it's like 15 minutes from my house, right. and they've done some really wonderful stuff that I've wanted to do for yeah. a long time. And it works really well with my family. Exactly. My, uh, my husband works out of state, so I depend a lot on my parents. So I'm kind of careful about what projects I pick. I have to make sure that they're something I really want to do or have been dying to do because it takes a lot of for sure. time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I ran across um, an ad in the paper that said they were having a teacher training workshop for this program in Denver. So I decided to check it out, and I loved it. Yeah. The first day I showed up, I was like, wow, I think I could do this. So I, I did the workshop, and then I started working for somebody else for two years. And then I opened up my own place here about five years ago, and I've been doing that and now acting simultaneously for the last five years. Yeah. Really busy. Very busy. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Especially two ones. But this is my first year that both kids are in school all day. Oh, that not just So my days are free, which is like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's see. Um, I was in New York City for 14 years. Yeah, I, I grew up in to see Boulder. And I had a music performance degree, which was all opera, pretty much. And I had not sung a note of opera since I left there. <laughs> um, I worked on a cruise ship right out of college for a year. And when I got off the cruise ship, I had to decide was I going to do LA or New York, and I couldn't decide. And I had a friend on the cruise ship that lived in New York City, so she's like, come on out and I'll show you around, mm -hmm. and I never left, just stayed there, brought my suitcases out, and like, you know, yeah. like the quintessential showing up on the train, yeah. and here I am, and I never came back until 14 years later, so um, the whole New York thing, for a long time, <laughs> lots of auditions, yeah. a couple national tours, a lot of regional work, um, a lot of training. You know, because I got my music degree in school, but we didn't focus on acting at all. I didn't take a single acting class in college um, or dance or anything like that. So when I went to New York, I really did some dance, but I took a lot of time to study acting. And that's what I think really propelled my career forward. I always felt like I was a good singer. I was like a decent singer, but I was probably not the best singer in the room. But I think what booked me jobs was the acting, was the callbacks on the acting, so yeah, yeah I did Guys and Dolls, was the first one, and then I was able to do Alona and She Loves Me, which I've been dying to do for a long time, um, and then 9 to 5, I did Violet, and oh, what came after that, Sing in the Rain? I think, yeah, I yep. think I did Sing in the Rain, I did um, Lena, who I adore. And then Dolly, and then The Witch. Mm -hmm. I think one that I could do probably for the rest of my life without ever getting tired of it would be Adelaide and Guys and Dolls. I just, there's, she's like a kindred spirit. I connect with her really easy, and she's got so many different facets to her. Mm -hmm. um, she's very vulnerable, she's very naive, but she's also very wise um, and funny, just funny. I adore comedy. If I could do comedy forever, that's probably what I would pick. Yeah. 
but there's always a very tragic side to comedy and if you don't have both then it's not funny <laughs> so no the candlelight's been awesome dave clark's great everybody that works there i think they do really quality shows um i've been fortunate to be able to live here and have my family and do that at the same time so it's, it's worked out well <laughs> um research a lot of research whether it's uh watching other productions of it, um, obviously going through the script. I have a very, um, I studied acting in New York for ooh, four years with this teacher called Penny Templeton. And she's got a very precise process, I guess. Okay. And um, so I, I get my book out, I get my tools out and I go through, and I have uh, very specific things that I do when I break down a script. So I spend a lot of time going through the script and breaking it all down. Um, stealing things. Stealing, I think every good actor steals stuff from other people, little bits and pieces here mm -hmm. and makes it your own. Um, yeah, I would say a lot of research. Um, a lot of memorization, obviously, you wanna come in off book for the most part if you can. Um, and then I just kinda see what's there when I get there versus like who's, who's working with me. Uh, what directors? I worked a lot with Don Berlin at the Candlelight. Yeah. That's m the main director I've worked out with. There, I mean, did Pat Payne too, um, but mostly Don Berlin, who I adore. Um, he always thinks so much before he gets there, which I really appreciate. And he's really broken everything down, but then he's very open to having discussions about how he sees it versus how you see it, and meeting in the middle somewhere. Um, yeah, so a lot of research. Yeah. And what would you I think it might be Dolly. Yeah, I really do. Um, the other ones I've done, I kind of connected with pretty quickly. There was something when I read that character, I was like, oh, I know her. I, just, I know yeah. who she is. Um, Dolly was really hard. I don't know if it's just because of the Carol Channing, um, Barbara Streisand facet, but I think anytime you take on something that it's been such an iconic thing, you don't want to be that person. You don't want to go out there and do an impression of Carol Channing doing Hello Dolly or Barbara Streisand. And so I think it was a little daunting because of those two people. I didn't want to be them. <laughs> and when I read her, I really had a hard I didn't like her. I really didn't like her when I read her first. I thought she was like, how selfish. And she's so money grabbing. And she's so, like, I was trying to find the redeeming qualities about her, what made people fall in love with her. Mm -hmm. And the first couple of read-throughs of it, I just wasn't mm -hmm. finding it. Yeah. And I just was like, I don't want to do this because I don't think I can bring anything to it. I just, I was having a hard time with that. But then once I narrowed in on her husband, her late husband passing, I felt like that's when all of the dolly came down and you really saw like her heart and who she really was underneath versus the show of Dolly on the outside. And so I think once I found that connection between her and her husband and the loneliness that was under there, um, then the rest of it didn't seem so fake to me. It just seemed like this is what she needed to do to get what she needed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So once I figured that out, then I was like, okay, I can do this. Good teachers, I think, are essential. Um, research, research, research. Go out there, see as much as you can, do as much as you can. Even um, if, if you're in the background or whatever, surround yourself with talented people and, and pay attention and just watch. I learned so much in New York just from being around amazing people and watching how they craft things together and how they work and um, stealing from them and just their process and what they do. Um, I think my acting teacher was really key in helping me figure out who I was as an actor. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to, to be in the background and just soak it up like a sponge. Um, Let's see, what else did I do? Uh, I think I was at the library a lot in New York. <laughs> 
performing arts library. They have amazing libraries if you're in New York. But um, you can go in there and watch any show, any Broadway production. They have it all archived. You can go in there and just watch. Um, I didn't, coming from an opera background, my musical theater knowledge was not very great. And I think every time I saw an audition in backstage, I went and I checked out the script, I got the music, I went through it all, I watched whatever I could watch, just so my knowledge of was expanded because I felt like I was behind. You know, I knew how to sing, but I, there wasn't a lot else at that time that I had to offer, so I had to do a lot of learning fast. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I yeah. think that, go with, you know, if you can get your card and that works for you, that's great. The Actors Union is great. I was in it for 16 years, I think. Um, and there's some wonderful things about that, benefits and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you don't want to probably take it too soon. There's like a, you know, there's a fine time of when you should take your card or not. Um, yeah, just, and teachers, really find some good teachers. Good question. I mean, if I can do, you know, a show or two a year that mean a lot to me and that are meaty and that I think I can add something to and that I want to dig my heels into, I'm good with that. Whether it's at the Candlelight or in Denver or wherever that may be, if I can just exercise my muscles a couple times a year and stretch myself, that kind of does it for me. That, that, that fills me up and at this point where I am right now with my family and everything, that's all I need. I just need to be able to stretch my muscles every once in a while. So next year, I'm not really doing anything this year. I kind of took this year off. Last year was a lot between Dolly and the witch and my business and my family and everything. So there wasn't anything that I was dying to do this year, honestly, at the candlelight. Um, next year, I'm hoping to do Kate and Kiss Me Kate. I would love to do that. That's one I've been wanting to do mm -hmm. for a long time. I saw Merritt Maisie do it on Broadway and so fun. <laughs> so, let's see. <laughs>